But I believe if you can, I mean, follow this procedure, it's really going to help you a lot. I do understand the frustration. I was also like that. I got upset multiple times. I mean, it even got to a point I went to the registry. I I kept giving bad reviews. Hey, this, that, that. But I mean, nobody's going to hear your cry. Recently, I did pass my class five license test. If you guys have been following my channel, I've been pursuing this whole license thing for some time now. Since I got to Canada, I've been working on this license issue. When I got here, I first did the class seven. With the class seven, it took me two tries to get everything. The first one I failed and then the second one I passed. So the class seven is the one that you take the test on the computer. And if you pass it, you will be able to jump straight to the class five, only if you have an existing license from your previous or your home country. If you don't, then you will have to wait a duration of one year in order to take the class five test. I did have a license from South Africa, so I did not have to wait the one year duration. Once I passed it, I jumped straight to the class five and the class five was where I experienced hell. I'm sure you do know this whole backstory, background stories, and this whole tough times that go alongside with the class five. Every instructor always has his or her own ways to fail someone. And this is the main reason why I'm making this video. I've actually noticed an idea or something which I believe might help someone who also want to take this whole class five thing. So guys, if this is your first time watching me, you may want to subscribe to the channel, like this video as well. And I believe I might help you a lot with this video. If ever you want to take your class five test, wherever, I don't know, Ontario, wherever, they don't have class five. That's I think it's about G1 or G something. But in Alberta, it's class five. It's the same as the GDL because way back you had to take the class seven GDL and class five. But now there's no GDL. You take class seven straight to class five. And this consists or involves highway tests, school zones, traffic and all that, merging road signs and everything that got to do with driving. I tried it multiple times. I even got fed up because every time you try it, it's your money that you'll be wasting. So... Each and every registry has its own price. They are not the same price. Some registry charges 100, 120, 150, 180, depending on what or well, where you go. And this excludes having your own transportation. I mean, if you have your own car to bring for the test, that's fine. As long as it's insured, as long as you got the registrations and everything, then you should be good to go. But if you don't have that, then you will have to rent a car from the registry, which is going to be another extra cost. To. If you don't have a car, you should be looking around 200, 250 in total just to take the test. So it's always advisable that you do get a friend, someone who is going to help you to take the test with his or her car. Based on the observations and things that I've spotted, I would say that anytime you go for the test, just in case you do fail the first time, please book the same test again at the same registry with the same instructor. I also did not know about this. I only noticed when I tried it multiple times. So if you don't know, you are actually allowed to choose your own instructor. I didn't know about that. I went in one day and then I asked, hey, I'm not happy with this instructor. Can I get another instructor? And they're like, sure, we can give you an instructor based on your own um, preference. But um, I don't know if all the registries will allow that, but I believe most of them will. So in case you do get the chance to, and you go for the first time, and by any means, any chance you fail, when you go in for the second one, try to go for the same instructor who instructed you at first. The reason is because the first instructor that instructed you the first time and you failed, let's say if you fail and you get to another test and you get another instructor, sometimes they do have different mood, different knowledge on this whole thing of driving. So let's say if you got a Mensa for the first test and he's like, no, you're supposed to have waited at a stop sign before proceeding and what, what, that is fine. If you get to another instructor, the person might also be like, well, you're supposed to have go, whatever. So it's two different things on its own. That is why I always recommend that anytime you fail your first road test, try to go in again, but request for the same instructor. So here's the thing. Let's say if you request for the same instructor and the first one, you failed at the stop sign because you were supposed to merge and you didn't merge or whatever the case might be. You know that the next one, 
you have to do this because the first one you did this and it didn't work. So the next time you need to do this. This happened to me. I booked an instructor and he was like, hey, I'm, uh, you got this, you failed, blah, 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 because here you merge, you're supposed to yield, check this and that. I'm like, okay, fine. So the next one, I went in with the same person and I did opposite of what he was complaining about. Since you've done it the first time with him, he knows that, okay, this guy knows what I failed him with. So I need to like observe if he's going to get this right for the, I mean, the second time. So it's always best that you choose the same instructor when you go for your second test, if ever you fail the first one. It works. This logic really, really works. With this whole instructing thing, it can be very hectic. I went in four good times and I spent almost $700 for all this test. That is even when I was using my own vehicle. So assuming if I did not have my own vehicle, I would have paid probably about a thousand to a thousand five, which is just insane. This advice is not much, but I believe if you can, I mean, follow this procedure, it's really going to help you a lot. I do understand the frustration. I was also like that. I got upset multiple times. I mean, it's even got to a point I went to the registry. I I kept giving bad reviews, hey, this, that, that, but I mean, nobody's going to hear your cry. <laughs> You're failing. Nobody's going to do anything about it. They have the power to fail you and they also have the power to pass you. So whatever be the case, just make sure that you manage to know the system and beat the system. So it's like um, a child. You are babysitting a child and now the baby did something wrong and you beat the baby up. Next time, the baby will not do the same thing because you beat the baby up for doing a certain thing that wasn't right. So next time, the baby is going to do it the opposite way. That is the same thing with this whole driving thing. So please always go for one instructor. It's going to be a waste of money if you go in for different instructors. So let's say you fail at this registry, you go to another registry, another instructor, another this it's going to be a whole lot of different and you'll be wasting your time and money and energy, effort, everything because now everybody has his own way of instructing. Everybody has his own way of instructing. It's just crazy. And it's not something like the government is actually seeing the process. It's not like the government is uh, assessing how you are being on the road with the instructor. There's nothing like that. So the instructor is always going to have the power to fail or pass you. Let me know some of the experiences you've had with this whole license thing. And I think this is actually going to be the last time I make a video talking about license and all that. So I got my class seven. I got my class five in less than three months, I guess, because the first one, the class seven, I started in November. And now uh, it's January. I think I got the, the class five in... I think I got it on the 6th of January, yeah, I can't, at the beginning of the year. So, um, yeah, everything seems cool now. Now I don't need to have someone next to me when I'm driving. Now I can drive by myself. Now I can apply for a job with my license. I mean, not having a license in this country is just crazy because there is a lot of things that you will be very much limited. First of all, the weather is very bad. And it's very much advisable to have a car, which is going to take you from point A to B. If you don't have a car and you keep taking buses, I'm not saying it's wrong. If you don't have money, if you don't have a car, just do what do you. Don't force it. But try as much as possible to get your license right. Try as much as possible to make sure that you are driving. Because having a car, driving, being mobile in Canada or any other part of the world, it's a necessity, not a flex. And another thing is, most of the job, most of the employees, most of the work that needs people require you to have a driver's license. I've come to a whole lot of jobs online. Sometimes I'll be applying for a job and they'll be like, um, we need a videographer, we need someone to cover this and that, but the person must have a license. Sometimes you may see, uh, we need a cleaner, we need someone who can clean this place six hours to this hours. Uh, but the person must have a license. It's just crazy. Sometimes they might not even say that the person must have a car. They will say the person must have a license. So probably the company is going to offer you a car for the ups and downs. But as long as you have the license, it opens or gives you the chance to a lot of opportunities. So 
Um, I'm glad I got mine right. It wasn't really easy. It wasn't easy at all. But I'm glad I passed through this whole thing. And yeah, it is what it is. Even though I've wasted money, I don't want you to also go through the same process. That is why I made this video for you. If you have any questions based on this whole thing, drop it in the comment section. And I will definitely get back or respond to you. Thank you for coming. Do not forget to hit on the subscribe button. Like this video. I'm talking very fast. Sorry, because I don't want the video to be very long. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thanks for coming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe. Peace. <laughs>